Over the past decade, Florida has consistently produced some of the best rappers of this generation. The reason that so many authentic street artists have come out of the Sunshine State is that beyond the sandy beaches and palm trees is a real world of poverty and violence that inspires their hard-hitting bars. Two promising rappers from Jacksonville, Florida, Young and Ace and Julio Fulio, have been involved in a deadly beef that caused a wave of terror in the city. Here's a look at Jacksonville's most wanted gangs, ATK vs KTA. Jacksonville police have identified as many as 30 dangerous street gangs in the city, but the two most deadly are ATK, a crew associated with rapper Young and Ace, and KTA, a crew affiliated with another rapper named Julio Fulio. KTA stands for Kill Them All. There's some disagreement as to what ATK stands for, with some claiming it means attack, aim to kill, or ace to kill, in reference to its most famous member. Jacksonville is known for being a wild city with one of the highest murder rates in the US. There were 111 murders in Jacksonville in 2020, and growing up, both rappers had to adapt to an environment of crime and violence. Young and Ace was born in Chicago, but moved to Jacksonville with his family when he was three years old. Growing up, Ace had a pretty traumatic childhood that was full of death and betrayal. His father was locked up on a 15-year sentence when the rapper was young and being one of 11 kids, his mother struggled to make ends meet. He bounced between different relatives' houses, never settling in one place for as long as the family was constantly getting evicted. His uncle was the head of the family and the only positive male role model in the artist's life growing up. After he passed away when Ace was only 13, he started using music as a way to express himself while also getting stuck into the street life around him. Julio Fulio, also known as just Fulio, had a similar upbringing, surviving the mean streets of Jacksonville. Growing up in Duval County, he experienced the deaths of close friends and family members with killings, hustling, and police activity all around him. The rapper dropped out of high school just in ninth grade, but before dropping out, he was shot in the leg while exiting a school bus. With school no longer an option, he decided to take music seriously, using street activity to support himself. Young and Ace first blew up back in 2017 with the track Go To War, which featured the rest of the ATK gang. Not long after, Fulio started buzzing in the city with tracks like Crooks and Slide. Even though they were two poppin' rappers in the same city, their beef didn't stem from the music. It all started after the killing of Julio's blood cousin, Zion Brown. Zion Brown got killed back in 2017 in what seemed to be a targeted shooting. Police later arrested a 19-year-old named DeAndre Thomas, who was charged with throwing a brick through the window of Zion's home before firing off several shots. Zion, along with two girls who also lived there, one who was 16 and the other who was only 9, were shot by Thomas. The two girls survived, but Zion was tragically killed. Thomas had ties to Young and Ace. The two had both been charged with a 2018 burglary, where they allegedly robbed somebody who was selling weed. During the burglary, shots were fired, nearly hitting a couple and a one-year-old child, but luckily, no one was injured. Ace spent a few months in jail for the robbery, while Brown still had a warrant out for his arrest when he was brought in for the Zion Brown murder. It's not clear what the motive behind the shooting was, or if Ace had anything to do with the hit, although the killing was clearly targeted. But whether he was involved or not, Fulio was out for blood, and not long after, Ace, along with four other people, were the victims of a retaliation shooting. On June 5, 2018, Ace, along with two friends and his blood brother, were shot after celebrating a birthday at Wasabi, a sushi restaurant in Jacksonville. After they left the restaurant, another vehicle pulled up alongside them and started letting off bullets. In an interview with DJ Vlad, Ace says he tried to shield his brother from the bullets, but it wasn't enough. He was the only survivor of the shooting. His brother and his two friends were pronounced dead on the scene. Ace was shot a total of eight times and brought to a local hospital to be treated for his injuries. To make matters worse, a local gun store owner saw his picture on the news and remembered him and his boys coming into his store earlier that day. He called the Crime Stoppers hotline to report seeing him in the store, and Ace was arrested in the hospital for violating his probation. He had been sentenced to 31 months of probation for the robbery he committed with DeAndre Thomas and was not legally allowed to possess a weapon as a convicted felon. Even though Ace never actually purchased a gun from the store, video surveillance footage showed him holding a gun, which was enough to be considered a probation violation. So three days after the shooting, Ace turned himself in at Jacksonville Police. Trayvon Buller, Ace's brother, had just turned 18 that day and was the rapper's closest sibling in age. It was a devastating loss to the artist, who wasn't even allowed to attend his funeral because a judge denied him a bond. After that, it was all-out war between the ATK and KTA camps. Fulio took to social media to taunt Ace and his dead homies. After clearing up his legal problems, Ace jumped right back online to tell Fulio and his crew that they would pay for killing his partners and dissing them after they were already dead. So the beef was no longer just in the streets, it was now being documented on the internet for everyone to see. In an interview with Say Cheese TV, Fulio claimed to being the most hated rapper in Florida and doubled down on his decision to diss Young and Ace and his dead friends and brother. 
He said that there are consequences to street life, and if Ace didn't already know that, then he'd have to learn. The beef stayed on the internet for a little while, but not for long. In January 2019, a rapper who went by the name Boss Goon was killed in a mass shooting that also injured five other people after a performance at a strip club called the Paradise Gentlemen's Club in Jacksonville. Boss Goon happened to be the older brother of another Jacksonville rapper named K-So, and many of the other people injured were members of his family. K-So is affiliated with Young and Ace, and is rumored to be one of the top shooters in ATK. Boss Goon had only recently been released from prison after serving a 10-year sentence in the pen. One of the other people shot in the ambush was K-So's father, Abdul Robinson. K-So and his dad shocked the city of Jacksonville and the hip-hop community after they were both arrested for the killing of a KTA affiliate named Lil Buck in Arlington. K-So was charged with a second-degree murder, and Abdul was charged with accessory to murder after the fact. A police officer witnessed the shooting occur and chased after K-So and another man he was with. K-So had already made the news back in 2019 after releasing album art for a track called Bibby Out that features the photos of several dead members of the KTA gang, including Zion Brown and a 16-year-old murder victim who went by the name Bibby Osama. It seems like the killing of K-So's brother Boss Goon was payback for blatantly disrespecting dead ops in the rapper's music and album artwork. Disrespecting dead ops in music and on social media has become common with this new wave of trap and drill rappers and it's a recurrent theme in this particular beef. But it always escalates the cycle of violence to a point that no one can escape until everyone is dead or in jail. Many petty disagreements can eventually be squashed if both rappers are willing to put the past behind them, even if blood has been spilled. But once you take it to a level where you're creating a permanent record of disrespect in the form of a song or album artwork, it's tough to walk away from that. It's an easy way to get to your ops if you aren't able to confront them in person at the moment, but it's a dangerous practice that any rapper who's serious about escaping the streets should avoid because it always leads to more bodies and more jail time for those involved. There have been all kinds of disrespectful tracks released by both camps that have fueled this deadly beef. After K-So's album cover made headlines, the rapper released the incredibly disrespectful track K-So where he doubled down on the disrespect of Bibi Osama by taking credit for the hit. Not long after, Fulio released a track called Bibby Story as a tribute to Bibby, where he details how he felt when Bibby was murdered and why the disrespect is so serious. Not long after the arrest, both Fulio and his girlfriend were shot in two separate incidents, but both survived. It seems like the shooter tried to get at Fulio, and when they couldn't take him out, they went after his girl. The streets of Jacksonville are so deadly that no one is safe. When the ops can't find who they're looking for, they'll go after the closest person to you, which includes friends, family members, and even innocent bystanders. The crazy thing is that the war seemed to help fuel both rappers' popularity with many of their tracks racking up millions of views. But with so much blood already spilled, it seems impossible for either camp to leave the streets alone long enough to capitalize on the success. After surviving one near-fatal ambush, Ace became the victim of another shooting where one of his homies was injured and another was killed. He and his crew were ambushed outside of Hampton Inn in Waycross, Georgia. In March 2019, police were called to the hotel with reports that gunshots had gone off. They found 30-year-old Jeremy Brookins dead by the pool and 29-year-old Dwayne Scott inside a hotel room with a gunshot wound. Ace was also with the group, but was not injured, surviving a second near-fatal ambush within the span of a year. Not long after, two members of the KTA squad, Spaz and Rod K, were killed in retaliation, adding two more names to the endless cycle of violence. Not long after that, the police saw what was going on and decided to keep Queso locked up while he awaited his murder trial for the killing of Lil Buck. Fulio claimed this as a victory and started mocking K-Soul on social media, claiming that the rapper used to rock with him and his homies before jumping ship to click up with Ace. What came next were some of the most disrespectful hip-hop tracks ever recorded in hip-hop history. On March 28, 2021, Young and Ace, along with ATK members Spin the Benz, Wappa with the Choppa, and Fast Money Goon, released a track called Who I Smoke. The song is a remix of the song A Thousand Miles by Vanessa Carlton and came along with a video of the four Jacksonville goons messing around on a golf course. The track is hard hitting and catchy until you get to the hook, where A starts the chant of Who I Smoke, followed up by the names of real KTA affiliates who have been killed, including Bibby, a Florida rapper killed in 2019 named Techie, and Lil Nine, another rapper shot and killed in 2020. The song is definitely creative, but tough to sit through once you realize they're disrespecting real people who are now dead. Some as young as 16 when they were killed. At least with most modern drill songs that contain lyrics dissing ops, the beat is cold-blooded and menacing, so you know some real shit is about to be said. Who I Smoke takes you by surprise by sounding like a pop record until you actually listen to the lyrics. The song was so wild, it's even gotten innocent Twitch streamers caught up in the beef. Not long after the track was released, internet personality Aiden Ross was tricked by some other dudes in a Discord chat into singing the lyrics. 
He later had to issue a public apology to Fulio during a live stream, who was clearly pissed off, but not about to smoke a gamer, just for getting pranked by some dudes who want to see him get into some bullshit. In response, Fulio released the track When I See You Remix, which samples the R&B track When I See You by Fantasia. Despite also having a catchy melody and upbeat instrumental, Fulio takes the disrespect to a new level by rapping about the shooting that almost left Ace dead while filming a music video on the grave of his dead friends and brother. He even went as far as having a poster with their faces on it from the Fox News coverage printed, which he raps alongside throughout the video. With these tracks, both rappers seem to be trolling while also dissing each other's dead friends and family, which is tough to do with a straight face. If there was any hope that the rappers could put the beef behind them and focus on music rather than the streets, these two songs destroyed it. Who I Smoke now has over 17 million views, and the When I See You remix has over 7 million. What's even crazier is that both rappers were able to get the rights to the original tracks they sampled. The war is far from over, and the two viral songs will likely lead to even more bloodshed. It's a shame that two talented rappers have gotten caught up in such a wild beef that has no end in sight. Given how creative they are with dissing each other, there's no telling what they could accomplish in the music industry if they put their minds to something positive rather than deadly street beef. But with so much blood already spilled and diss tracks already released, it's unlikely either side will let up anytime soon.